said. If you're in there and you don't find out within the first couple hours what the warning system is, start asking. Okay? Seconds count when emergencies happen. Uh, I can't stress enough the importance of practice and training and thinking of those things. I can tell you that I have been on runs that has freaked me out. But it's because of the training that I've had, I've been able to keep a calm demeanor. And what that does when you're calm, it calms the people around you down. When, because whether they, they know you're eating up on the inside or as twisted as they are on the inside, when you are calm and you've got training, you know a step-by-step -step process you need to go through. Like it's pretty simple. Life safety is always first. Normally you look at stabilizing the incident because then the emergency is over. Then you look at some type of recovery. So your first question is always life safety. It's step-by-step. -step. It helps me be calm because that's just ingrained in me through training. And I would suggest that you train some in this stuff. Some in emergency preparedness. The more prepared you are when the sirens go off, oh, I know what that's for. We're supposed to go here. You're not going to be one of those guys running around freaking out thinking, well, what's that? What's that? You know? So just be prepared and and uh, identify those type of, of emergency signaling devices. Uh, I got a big bowl. Keep your unit together. And again, it's, it's all about the buddy system and your unit. There's strength in numbers. Whether you're just participating for fun in an activity or whether you're going to the restroom in a chow hall or whatever it is you're doing, there's always strength in numbers. Be a hard target. Okay? Always stick with your buddy. Uh, suggest putting together maybe some sort of phone tree for it at home. Uh, suggest that while you're there, you know, nothing makes an actual parent a little more comfortable of knowing that, that they get a call once a day from someone saying, everybody's still alive, nobody died, we're having a good day. You know, and then have them a phone tree so where they can call and call each other. So you're only making one call that way. You guys are probably somewhat familiar with somebody with a phone tree. Put a phone tree together for at home because that way you can get the all clear kind of daily. But if there is an emergency too, you only need to get through once. Okay, because hey, after 9-11, no one was on a cell phone. Right? Because of that. So you want to be able to, to have at least just one contact and if you get lucky you get one number, the people that are left behind here have a system in place in a phone tree that they can contact each other, let them know at least someone's got a hold of them, they've got your troops, you're all accounted for, and take a deep breath that way. And I think that's about it. I know it was quick. Um, some of you guys are familiar with uh, uh, heater meals? I MRE? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> well, I got enough. I got one here for, uh, I think, each troop that's present. And I'm going to leave it up to Mr. Thomas to figure out how he wants to uh, award those or throw them out. But maybe some activity during the day. You guys can figure out the competition. Actually, they're a lot better than they used to be. <laughs> when I was in the Navy in the, in the 70s, they were, they were like... Uh, Stone or chicklets and stuff like that. But uh, uh, these aren't too bad. I got in them to drink, hot lunch, heat them up, slide them back inside, they heat them up. And uh, so they're pretty decent. And I do have some handouts here. I hope, especially this one, you guys might sit down, uh, whether it's while you're here or when you get home, and look at this. It's basically just preparing uh, your home uh, for an emergency, yourself, uh, what to do if you're on the road or away or have to move to a shelter. Kind of a checklist. So to help you actually with part of that merit badge, if you haven't gotten it and you're working for it. And I guess the last thing I was going to show you was, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a kit I put together. I actually just use this one for kind of a show and tell thing. But I actually have one just like it uh, in my basement at home. And uh, I do practice what my son sees on me a little bit. Uh, good, thanks. I, uh... I do practice what I preach, by the way. I mean, I'm not one of these guys thinking the end of the world is going to come next week. But uh, I do have, like, my own home. I got a thousand gallons of propane uh, that I have buried. Uh, now, it's, I mean, it's not buried just sitting there. It's in my house. But I only burn uh, 1,700 gallons a year. So I top it off twice a year. So I pretty much have a supply of propane paint uh, buried in the ground that can last me at least six months. 
Um, I've got, I also burn a secondary heat source, which is coal. I have a little coal stove that I can burn. I don't burn much propane because I use coal. I actually have, I have a, a, a year's additional supply of coal that I have stored. I've got three months of food in the basement. Uh, I've got uh, the, the, the method to purify the water. I got a creek that runs across my property, so I'm pretty, pretty lucky there that it's spring fed. Um, but I like to tell you, know, I don't come here and just try to share with you something I've read in a book or I think it's a good idea. I mean, uh, I actually practice what I preach. Uh, this is my life. I believe in it. Um, I tell you, it's not the highest paid job in the world, uh, but there's nothing more rewarding than to actually save somebody. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's, it's just a, it's just a, a great feeling. Uh, and I want to show you this because I, I threw it together. Like I said, I got one almost identical to it in my basement. Um, and it's just got, and, and by the way, most of this is in one of these little pamphlets, kind of a supply kit of what you need. Now you imagine this is, this is big enough for a family of four uh, for three days. So excluding the water, but I have the water uh, way to purify it. Um, so you can imagine that you yourself, as you look at building a kit for yourself, you could cut this in a quarter, you could pretty much put it in a book bag, a standard book bag, and have enough stuff uh, to last you three days. And, you know, of course, you can't get along without that. You're going to be miserable after about a day. So, you know, we have, I have some odds and ends in here. I'll pull some of it out. Water container. First aid kit. Can't get by without Roman numerals. Right? You guys had those yeah. counts, baby? Yeah. Like I said, I try to keep enough for, well, there is. There's enough for a three day supply, oatmeal for breakfast, some more heater meals. Got two sleeping bags. Dust mask. Aspirins, whistle, water purification tablets, a couple of three, four lighters, flint, flashlights, uh, crank type radio. And I got about, I, I bought some of this stuff you can see. I got about $60 into this, but you see, you know, you, you could assemble a decent first aid kit around the home just by pulling stuff in, you know. Uh, old sheets and you clean for bandages, things like that. Gas for my quick stove, for my laundry. Now what's that for? What can you use this for? What, what can you use this for? More important than that. Laundry. Sanitation. Yeah. Kills germs. 10 drops to a gallon of water. Purify would want to drink it indefinitely, but it will work. Okay. Got a small stove. Extra clothes. Rest of it's just food. So, again, you would. This is for a family of four or something big, and it almost takes a mule to haul around. But I can carry it still. I'm not that old. Uh, but you guys could build your own kit again for about a quarter of this size, and probably not have more than you know ten dollars in it. Maybe from some of the stuff you might not have lying around. So, if there's any questions, I'll take them now. You want to get out there and enjoy the sun, don't you? I understand. So do I. I want to get to my garden. <laughs> Gentlemen, any questions from you guys? You need me to hit anything on this? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Hopefully you found it uh, beneficial. And I hope you'll use some of the literature to do some of the planning work. Again, I appreciate coming in. Um, I think it's important. I know where my future lies. I'm looking at it. So, thank Craig, you for time. Craig, I got a question. Yep. What's the best way to store water at home for long-term storage in case uh, you need it? I, I'll tell you what, and I, I'm a firm believer. If I don't know, I say I don't know. I have not heard of a good way yet to, to make sure. I mean, I thought about myself. You know, they talk stainless steel. Of course, you talk a lot of money there. Um, I don't know of any good way for long-term water storage. Uh, rather than just buying it, buying it off the shelf, make sure it's not open, still sealed. I imagine it'd be good for a year, but that's a guess. But that's why I have this water purification tablets and stuff like that. I don't even have stored water in my